how can you do that? Pull in the middle of the road and then not turn. Come on. You can do better than that. Oh, fuck. Oh, fucking idiot. What's wrong with him? So today we're on the road to Don Tan. What happened in Don Tan, darling? We go look. Menam Kong, Mekong River. Have some flowers or something? Yes, flower. Yeah. Flower for show, like in uh, Konken when we go? Yeah. Yes? Okay. It happens to be, it's just the colloquial way of dealing with people. A lot of it is humorous. A lot of it is jibes. A lot of it is revving each other up. I have two legs, I can. <laughs> But if I go down, I have to come back up again. So I got told I had to walk. So here's uh, all of his flowers. These look like Doc Mai, which is what we plant. So um, by the size of those, those are uh, about double the size of seedlings. So he's probably got about another 30 days and all of this will be like our place. It'll be all in bloom. Let's go and walk over to the edge here and we'll have a bit of a look. So here we have the mighty Mekong. Down below we have a boat and there's his pump down there so he's dragging as much water as he wants any time he wants he has no trouble growing anything quite a bit of a breeze i i hope that the dead cat on the microphone is um, helping to quieten that down a bit you see we have some quite serious sorts of rapids here at points Obviously large rock outcrops in the riverbed. And that island is quite a substantial size. I'd be interested to know if that's, I'm guessing it's part of Thai soil because the major part of the Mekong is the other side of it. I'll have to have a look on a map and see if I can find out. I don't know if you can pick it up, but down there, I'm saying down there, if I have a finger that you can see, at the top of my finger here, there's a fish trap. It's a wire cage or a net cage around bamboo backbone. There's a couple more to the right of it. So I'd say that he gets fresh fish out of that without too much trouble, without actually getting his feet wet. He can wander down the embankment, out across the rock, rock outcrop and there he is good for him I don't know how our lighting is going here but uh, that looks okay so I'll turn that back around again and you'll get the opportunity I'll get me back in perspective a bit I still had it zoomed Okay, um, let's turn around. So that's where we came from. We wandered down the bamboo steps there. We've got some nice deck chairs up there. Looks like they're just a sitting point. I bet that's a great place to sit in an evening, a hot evening, with a beer or ten, 
and just enjoy the water going past. It would be beautiful. A beautiful setting. Remember, over that side is, is Laos. It's another country. More rapids there. And the rock embankment I was talking about. This is all man-made, obviously to stop erosion. And if you can look at the colour, the grey is the unstained exposed rock but you can see where it goes to light brown then down to dark brown um, well the light brown would be probably the the high water mark so if I just turn that so that we can get that sort of on the horizon you can see that a high water mark that is an enormous amount of difference I don't think I can calculate how many meters that that is um, 10 maybe that's 30 foot higher of water on the Mekong she does carry an enormous amount of water when the floodgates are open upstream when the weather is in the monsoon season or the wet season those combined what happens is China has enormous dams across the Mekong upriver in their portion of it and obviously when the rainy and the wet season comes along those dams get inundated and they need to get rid of it so the land around obviously drains and they're not getting flooded in villages and rural areas there so they open up the floodgates and historically they've done it without any consultation of the countries downstream Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia and it has a great impact you can have enormous flooding very suddenly within a few days you go through a natural level of water to a level which is breaking the banks of the Mekong in those countries and flooding you know the associated uh, surrounding areas happens in Nakompanom happened a couple of years ago enormous flooding well under underwater Lao, Lao yeah <laughs> and the man's got a, a lot getting back to this island on the other side if you consider that um, when the river's inundated a big portion of this island is going to be underwater turn so you can look at it um, you can see the big rock outcrop and there's you know trees and bushes and things growing on that but that portion of it if you think 10 meters of water that would be covered and I did ask to tell me and she said yes this is Thai territory this island is Thailand now I can't fully zoom in to give you a perfect view but maybe I can do that in a little bit of processing on video processing. Up there, about center of your view on the top, you'll see there's sort of a, a gap in the trees. And there's one brown or dead tree in the middle. But at the base of that, there's a crop of some sorts. It looks like something's maybe a meter high or maybe a little bit more. So there's agriculture going on over there and if we just turn a little bit to the right there is something that doesn't look natural there. There's another crop of some sort, uh, big bushy trees. I'm not sure if they're citrus or what they are but uh, maybe we can see, if I had a telescope I could see now but I can only go two times zoom on, on the pocket too. But uh, we're shooting in 4K, so maybe I've got the definition to be able to pick it up in the video processing software. Give that a try. So yeah, that's Thai territory, and I'm getting that there's ties over there. Not that you can see any people. Um, 
coming down a bit to here, there's something glistening in the, the sun, something silver. So I'm guessing that's a, a roof or a windmill or, or something metallic, man-made. So maybe there's some activity down there too. All very interesting. <laughs> and a way to pass the day. Okay. Cucumber. Yeah. Oh, I think maybe two. <laughs> oh. Well, I see something to climb up. Okay, so cucumber here. Bamboo frames with a bit of netting on them. And <laughs> the papier that we're walking around. This is the papaya. They're only good for one year and you have to replant. But that's it, they get to full maturity, fruit, and then they die. And you put in more. Well, we're about to hop in the car. We've got all our cherry tomatoes, which are going to be for friends. And I have to open the car. And I've got a feeling that we've got some flowers here because we just paid 1400 bucks for our drinks, our cherry tomatoes, and I'm pretty sure there's flowers there for us. So, what are we going to do? It looks like they've got a little nursery here for seedlings. Here's where they do their seedlings, huh? Have small small. Okay. Very rudimentary little sort of area, but it's all they need for what they do. We have more seedlings over here. These people have got lights and they'll put those on in the evening. They extend the well, it's not daylight, but the the lit hours and that brings the flowers on a lot quicker we we did it for a few times but um we'd leave them on for you know another four five six hours in the evening depending on the actual maturity of the the plants and it increases the the yield okay and these are the the cherry tomatoes they're coming off of these little bushes here but um it's breezy here. Normally a tomato plant is self-supporting. Maybe cherry tomatoes are different. But all of these ones are on a similar um, bamboo lattice with plastic mesh to give them some support. They're quite spindly in the main sort of stalk so once they get a bit of fruit on them, yeah, I can understand they'd fall over with the weight. And as you saw, we've got another patch of cabbages, and these are all quite mature. They're not a cabbage in a similar way to a Western cabbage. It has a very tightly packed centre bunch. They're a lot more open, and uh, I don't know, maybe um, maybe that's more like a Chinese sort of cabbage or Chinese lettuce, similar, very open rather than closed ball. So today's a bit of a day for <laughs> a bit of a day trip. Town his birthday in a couple of days, so we're doing a few things on whim. Just a bit playful. So um, there's a bit of agriculture for you, a bit of horticulture for you, and a bit of day out near the uh, Mena Mekong. So okay, there we go. They're the flowers that we bought today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's eight there. They're in the back of the car. And the ladies in the front of the car, checking out babies. <laughs> and we're about to hit the road, guys. We came on in on this bit of a goat track and we're going now. 
and this road is kind of up and down. It's only one car width. Could only possibly do one way. But there is actually another way out. In Grimmel. Not this one yet. Lots of little places here. There seems to be degrees of farming going on. People growing stuff here. Um, but now we're told to go out this way and we can go out on the main road so I think in all truth when we were down on the river looking at the Mekong we were standing on it <laughs> there's a big cleared flat area by the concrete ap apron in front of the river where the railings was so that's where we're heading now we're right out in the sticks here guys I can tell you Guessing left is the way to go because right looks like it's not for cars. Oh. I'm thankful for the stabilizer on the pocket too. <laughs> the gimbal's doing all the work because the suspension on the car's certainly doing a bit. Oh. <laughs> More things growing. We have trees, we have somebody here sitting on the side of the road. We have a group of people, obviously they're doing planting and or tending to whatever it is they're growing. Now, not here. We're flying a bit blind here guys. We're just going where we've been told to go. We're flying a little bit blind, so we're only doing a few kilometers now. Because it's kind of rugged bit of terrain here. <laughs> well, good fun. That's why Thailand is so interesting. That's why people want to be here. Oh. Just had a motorcycle go the other way. There's some more crops. Mekong in the background. bit of a rough and ready sort of landscape here. I'm wondering if some of this isn't flood damage. Would the water get up this high darling? When the Mekong have too much water they get up this high? No? I don't think so. Maybe we're too high up. Well maybe the road is. Maybe the surrounding area is not too high. Ugh. Oh, 
we have growing here, darling? I know the plant, but I can't think which one it is. These ones. For bakery. For bakery. Yeah, but but what name pun am I? Man Sampalang. Oh, man for, Okay. I'm trying to remember what Mount Philan is. Yeah, okay, we're actually at the bitumen. Oh, goody for us. And Mem tells me go right, so I'm going to put the camera down now, guys. Catch ya. So, as always, please subscribe. Give me some comments. Give me some questions on, on what you've seen today and pop them in the, the comments down below and I'll get to those and I'll give you answers where I can when I can't maybe we'll do a video or something on it catch you later guys bye